What's up everybody? It's Michaela. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be telling you guys all about my summer I spent in Alaska. So this past summer of 2022 was by far the best summer I have ever had in my entire 22 years of life on planet Earth. Just the experiences I got to experience and the things I got to see and do is just the most incredible thing that I could have ever asked for. It is currently Tuesday, November 1st, and our summer is very, very over. Currently, it is sunny and 31 degrees. We had our first snowfall here in Juneau a couple days ago, and now all of the mountains have snow on them, and it is just such a beautiful time. So as I am talking throughout this video, I'm going to be putting up a bunch of pictures and videos I took over the summer. So I hope you guys enjoy, and let's dive in. I guess the most important thing to start out with is what I did over the summer. So I was a naturalist for Allen Marine Tours in the Juneau division. So I loved that job. Job. The hours were extremely long. I worked a lot, but I made a lot of money and I made some incredible friends I also met my boyfriend through Alan Marine. So anything is possible It was an amazing summer and if you guys want a video talking more about being a naturalist and working in Alaska over the summer and like what it takes and how to apply and stuff Give this video a thumbs up. I'm more than happy to make that video for you guys because I believe applications start, they either opened now or they open in a month, but I know I applied late November. So I'll link it down below so you guys can fill out an application if you want to. Tell them Michaela sent you over. And if you wanna work with me over the summer, keep your eye out for that video and for that link down in the description box. Basically a short summary of what I did as a naturalist is I was the person on the microphone talking on the boat and I talked about everything we were seeing. So I did whale watching tours in Juneau. I also did some Tracy arm and Endicott arm tours out in the Ford's Terror wilderness. I also was in Huna at least once or twice a week and I spent a week up in Yakutat doing the Hubbard Glacier tour. So Alan Marine kind of put me everywhere and it was such a great way to see Alaska, well at least Southeast Alaska, and get paid to do it. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm basically just gonna be scrolling through my camera roll, picking out a bunch of pictures and stuff and just talking. So it's gonna be kind of in order in the events that I did over the summer. The training was the last two weeks of April. So tours started the very, very last couple days of April. Although I didn't really do those because I was still in training. The naturalists that were there last year did those. So my kind of first tour that I shadowed was a Tracy arm tour on May 4th. And fun fact, the day I woke up to do this, I was like, oh, I don't really feel that great, but you know what, it's probably because of finals and training and just everything, I'm probably just tired. And Tracy arm, if you guys ever get the chance to come up here on a cruise ship or on a separate vacation, you guys need to go to Tracy arm. It is just such an amazing place. But the day after Tracy arm, I tested positive for COVID along with like five of my other coworkers. I went hammocking by myself. I saw bears for the very first time. And I remember calling my boyfriend, well he wasn't my boyfriend at the time, but I remember calling him and I was like, oh my God, I just saw bears for the very first time. And he's lived in Alaska since he was like 11 and he's 27 now. So he was like, that's great, Michaela. good for you. And I'm over here like freaking out because I just saw a bear for the first time. After five days of being in quarantine, I was finally able to go back to work and I went to Huna. So I'm gonna put a map of Juneau and like the surrounding villages. Uh, so to get to Huna, you go upland canal, past point retreat, and it's in Icy Strait. So it was about a two hour boat ride and they're called deadheads because you don't have passengers on the way there or the way back and it's like that for Tracy Arm too. I learned how to drive. My captain let me drive the boat. But while we were in Huna, I saw bubble net feeding for the very first time and it was so awesome. Bubble net feeding is something that can only be seen in Alaska. 
So it's basically the humpback whale goes under, blows a bunch of bubbles, trapping that herring, and then they lunge up in the middle of that bubble ring. Ah, uh, and then I went home for eight days at the end of May. So between getting COVID and going home, I really didn't do a lot of work in May. And then I got back May 20th, 19th or 20th. And from the end of May to the beginning of July was pretty much straight sunshine. And it was beautiful. June was so hot. It got up to like 85. And the thing about Alaska is since we have that constant sun, we had like 18 and a half, 19 hours of sunlight in one day in June. So it was just constantly beating down on us. So it always felt 10 degrees hotter than it really is and that it really was. So it felt like 95 degrees most of June. And when you have boats that are meant to keep people warm and dry, we did not have a lot of happy passengers and a lot of happy crews, but <laughs> we made it through. But June was such an incredible sunny time. So in May, I also got to see humpback whales bubble net feeding. Literally like you could see the cruise ship in the video. Every other week we would spend the night in Huna, whether that be the, the day before the trip or the day after the trip, we kind of got to choose which we wanted to do. But the overnights were always super fun. We got to stay in this little lodge that they have in town and we got to hang out, play pool, go to the bar and eat dinner as a crew. And it was really, really fun. And then the last day of May, my friends and I had a lake day. We rented some canoes and we had some drinks and it was just a really good time. So June 1st was a Wednesday, so it was Huna day. So we went out to Huna and then we actually came back on our day off. So technically it wasn't a day off. That was the first and last time we ever did that, but I am so glad we did. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint you guys a picture. So it was, 8 30 in the morning we left huna probably at around 6 45 or more like 7 7 15 and on my deadheads if i was tired i took a nap i was taking a nap and i noticed that we were stopped and i was like why are we stopped and i was like you know what? it's probably just the deckhand like checking something whatever and then i kept noticing why are we still stopped it's been like five minutes and then I don't have any shoes on, I don't have a jacket on, like I was out cold before I realized that we were stopped. And I kind of peek my head up and I see the tallest black dorsal fin. I freak out. And this was the very first time I ever saw killer whales in the wild and my captain knew this and that's why he stopped, sat down after we left and just bawled my eyes out. And my captain was like laughing and making fun of me but that was the most incredible moment of my entire summer. Literally the very next day on June 3rd. So we, I don't know if I can pull up a map, but here's our dock and then there's Ock Bay and then you have to go out of Ock Bay. So while you're going through Ock Bay, it is a no wake zone. So it takes us about five to 10 minutes to fully get out there. And during that time, I do my safety speech and I do like the Coast Guard stuff, all the safety stuff on the boat, all the rules and everything like that. So I'm talking and the captain interrupts me and we have an ongoing joke that the only time he's allowed to interrupt me as if there are killer whales, so I was doing my safety speech and he goes, hey Michaela, sorry to interrupt you there, but if you guys look off our port side, we got some killer whales in the bay. So I start freaking out because this is only my second time seeing killer whales, but let's be real here guys, the entire summer when I saw killer whales, I freaked out. I may have like done this to my captain a lot, may have screamed in his ear a lot. So I'm sorry, Neil. I really apologize, but I don't really apologize. But these guys swam right next to the boat and I was freaking out, the passengers were freaking out and it was just amazing. June is also when we start seeing a lot of the humpback whale babies. So we had two babies this summer. We had Flames Calf and we had Barnacles Calf, which we gave them nicknames. We nicknamed Flames Calf Baby Bang and we named Barnacles Calf Baby Bojangles. 
So we saw a lot of them this summer and it was really cool to get to see them grow up and get a lot stronger and be able to breach and tail slap. In June, I also got to see my first bear in Huna. Huna has brown bears and they are actually not called grizzly bears. Grizzly and brown bears, they're genetically the same, but their names are a little bit different. But I got to see my first brown bear, which is really cool. We saw him on the shoreline. So in May and June, they're really commonly seen on the shorelines in Huna because they are eating clams and little mussels and oysters. And then once the salmon start running in July and August, we don't really see them as often because they're upstream eating that salmon. We also found this little point on Douglas Island Nick likes to call Point Nicholas. It's actually called False Outer Point. So these pictures were taken at nine o'clock at night. The sun didn't fully ever set in June or July. It was always that kind of like midnight blue, but it was the best ever. And now that the sun is setting at like 4 p.m., it is depressing. <laughs> Another bear encounter I had in June is when we were waiting for our shuttle in Huna to take us to our hotel. Now this video was taken at 9.59 at night and it is still that bright out but it was a little brown bear munching on some trash. June 18th was also one of the best days over the summer and it was because we got two breaches from two different species. We got a humpback breach and a killer whale breach and that was my very first time seeing a killer whale breach and I might have screamed. No, I did scream. At the end of June, there was also a lot of little baby bear cubs running around Juno. So there is this field that is ironically right by the dump because as sad as it is, Juno bears are trash bears and they eat a lot of trash. Okay guys, I have two more days in June that stand out. Number one was June 24th. So June 24th was by far one of the best photography days I had all summer. So in June, the mountains still have snow on them and we saw killer whales and I captured my all time favorite picture I have ever taken probably or close to it. And it was a bull killer whale with two juveniles trailing behind him right in front of the Chilkat Mountains. I blew it up on a giant canvas and it's in our kitchen hanging up. I also took this picture right here, which is a bull orca with two smaller ones emerging out of the water at the same time. I'm actually gonna get this tattooed probably like right here on my arm sometime in the near future. All right, the last Huna trip of the month of June was June 28th and 29th. So we went over on the 28th and we actually did two tours in the evening on Tuesday and then did tours in the daytime during Wednesday. But our evening tour for Tuesday got canceled and the people were like, yo, you wanna do the zip line? And we have been dying to do the zip line all summer. And we got to do the zip line and it was so awesome. And then the next day we had our tours, the very first tour, we get off the dock, hey yo, we got killer whales. And I was like, let's go. And this day I also took one of my favorite pictures and it, this one is also hanging up on a canvas right there on that wall. We are now into July. So the first week of July was very, very sunny. My boyfriend and I went berry picking and then we had more sunny days. I had beach days to myself. This is where my addiction with Red Bull Spritzer started. So I pretty much always had a Red Bull Spritzer in my hand. And this was my first 4th of July in Juneau and the fireworks didn't happen until midnight. And as you guys can see from this picture, it is still not all the way dark. So that was really fun though. And then after that, it kind of started getting really cloudy again and it stayed cloudy for the majority of the summer. So on July 11th, I was leaving with another coworker to go up to Yakutat, Alaska to go work the Hubbard Glacier tours for a week. I volunteered to do it, I wanted to travel, but Yakutat is super, super beautiful. It's a very, very small village with like 800 people. And this is where the expensive food in Alaska is that they're talking about. I think the creamer was like $8 or $9 or something like that. But we spent the first day there just messing around. We had the day off and it was just so beautiful. Hubbard Glacier is, I don't, I don't even have words. It's an advancing glacier. So it's actually not receding, it's getting bigger, 
which was really cool to talk about. We had another day off and it was actually sunny. So we got to pick salmon berries and we made salmon berry pancakes for dinner. We're into August now and I finally was able to photograph black bears. Every time I saw them in the field, I didn't have my camera. We're getting to the last week before school started. And then I went on a Tracy trip, which was really cool. My captain got certified to do Tracy trips, which was really awesome. Tracy Arm is one of my favorite places in the world. And it is essentially untouched because the only way you can explore Tracy Arm is by boat. So there's no motorized vehicles like cars or ATVs or anything allowed. You can't hike there. You can't camp there. And it's really amazing because like I said, it is essentially untouched because of that. That was a lot of information that I just threw at you guys. So if you guys stayed till the end, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. As you guys could tell, this summer was beyond words. It was the best summer I've had in my entire life and I'm so excited for next summer already so I could do it all over again. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, give this video a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.